My name is Quentin D'Souza. I am the Chief Education Officer of the Durham Real Estate Investment Club. You're watching Real Deal Rentals. This is a series of videos showing real estate investors in the local area, how they're investing in real estate, what type of renovations they're doing, and how they're able to make cash flow. And you can do it too. Well, Chris, Anita, Nice Thank you, you for here. having me here. This is great. So this is your property in, in Oshawa, right? Right. And um, so what, do you, what did you like about the area? What, what made you decide on, on this property in particular? Well, I think it's all about the area with this one. Um, okay. It steps to a really, really big shopping mall. Um, it's right by the bus route. Okay. It's close to a good school. Um, so the location from our perspective is a, is a 10 out of 10. Especially at the mall here in Oshawa, it's really a transit hub too for everybody. So mm -hmm. you don't necessarily have to have a car. There's lots of jobs at the mall. The mall's expanding. We really like being anywhere around the Oshawa Centre here. All right. Great. And um, could you describe a little bit of, about what this property was before or what, sorry, be, what, what it would have rented for as mm -hmm. like a single family home perhaps? Um, if this was the detached house in this area, what do you think, you know? Um, I think if it was a single family home, which it was when we bought it, I think it would have rented for, you know, maybe 1600 plus utilities. About 1600 yeah. so I think that would have been the max. Okay. For sure, yeah. So 1600 plus utilities, and then what have you done to the property since you, you bought it? Okay, what we decided to do is was, was we changed the use of okay. the unit. Um, so it went from a single family home to a duplex. Excellent. So essentially we added a unit in the basement, okay. uh, there's a separate unit up here, and we're going to rent the upper and the lower separately to two separate uh, sets of tenants. And, and what was the, what, what do you think the rents are going to be now that you have like uh, this unit, and it's a three bedroom upstairs, and, yes. and how many downstairs? Two downstairs. Two downstairs. And yeah. what do you think the, the rents are going to be up here and then downstairs? We're just advertising it now. We're getting really good interest, and we're advertising it at fourteen hundred upstairs plus utilities. Right. So we should be able to get that. We've had multiple parties interested, mm -hmm. and downstairs we're thinking eleven fifty um, plus utilities. Eleven fifty plus utilities. Yes. So now you're taking it from sixteen hundred to twenty five fifty. Yes. Right. Wow, that's incredible. And um, if you don't mind, can we get into a little bit of the numbers? Is that okay? Like. So what, what was your uh, purchase price of the property? Uh, so we bought this property for $320,000. Um, our renovation costs are going to be approximately forty-five dollars to $50,000. Okay. Um, and I think post-renovation, it should it should reappraise for over $400,000. Over $400,000. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Very good. So how much do you think you're going to be left in the, uh, the deal after you... You've done the refinance. What's your? We should be pretty. We, we should be able to get out all our renovation costs. All your renovation costs. So yeah. fifty thousand dollars, you know, yeah, back yeah. out. Yeah. Okay. And then, what do you think your cash flow number is going to be now that you moved from sixteen hundred to twenty five fifty? Yeah. Like, what do you think you're going to? Uh, the numbers, guys. <laughs> without without vacancy repair property management, just raw cash flow because it's easier to compare that okay. way. Okay. Um, do you want to say include the refinance number or? The yeah, at, at the refinance okay. number. Yeah. At the refinance number, we should be able to cash flow approximately seven hundred to eight hundred dollars a month, which is a lot higher than we initially thought. Wow, that's yeah. great. I think part of that is attributed to the fact that we knew what the rents were going to be. Mm -hmm. um, we knew what the aftermarket value of the property was going to be even before we bought it. Great. Um, so we're big proponents of being area experts. Yes. Um, we're basically targeting areas of the city that we're comfortable with, where the rent numbers are high, where we can buy at a very decent uh, price point, um, and we know what our renovation costs are, we can control those as much as possible. Yeah. yeah, and what you've done is you've taken a property and you've lifted it easily and, and got it to the point where it's, it's the it's highest and best use, yeah. you know, without having to do variances and rezoning and all of that. You know, you've really done, you know, your homework here, you know the area, you know what's required and so it makes it easier for you to be able to do that. And the place looks great. <laughs> Uh, we should look at some of the cabinets here because, you know, I, I know somebody who would be jealous of those cabinets. <laughs> they're, they're, they're quite nice, for sure. Well, we liked it so much that uh, we actually lived here for uh, a short period while, Three months. The, yeah, while the renovation was going on. Yeah, yeah that's a neat way of doing it. So why did you decide to move in? Was it like, uh, did it just make sense? Did it help you to carry it, the property? It was a couple of reasons. Of course yeah. it helps to carry the property. It's yeah, a mortgage. Yeah 
you, if you don't have to carry many mortgages other than the one you're living in, that's always nice. But um, I was at the time very pregnant, so I was about to go on maternity leave. So it was a good time for us to actually move to Oshawa and get to know the area because we're not from here originally. Right. So we liked this property enough that we knew we could move in. The upstairs was pretty close to ready. Put it this way, a week before our baby was born, we didn't have a kitchen sink or laundry in here, but we got it in right before the baby uh, uh, uh. came. It's here now. <laughs> um, but it, it's taught us a lot to live here, so that's been invaluable for us as well. Um, and we're both pretty flexible, easygoing people. So we moved from a previous um, uh, investment property to this one, and now to our next one, actually. It was more out of necessity than anything else. Yes, so we were at a point, yeah. My Sorry. wife has been very, very kind. So we had another property which we thought we were very comfortable in living in, and we actually turned that into a student rental. Right. Um, so we threw out a ghost ad, and uh, the rents that we got were just astronomical. So we had to we had to rent it. Cool. So we rented it to four or five students, or on paper, we, we had promised it um, at the beginning of the school year. And so we had no place to live and about six weeks to go. And a baby coming. And a baby coming. Uh, yeah, and a baby coming. <laughs> so, so then you buy another house. Uh, and and move into that. Move into the house, do the renovations. Yes. Yeah. And then move to another house. And do the same thing again, probably. Do the same probably. thing again, okay. yeah. Probably, yeah. Excellent. You're, you're, you're very hardcore. Yeah, I love it. That's awesome. It's going to slow down eventually. <laughs> yeah, it'll have to. Yeah. With, with the baby here now, it makes it a little more difficult. Yeah, that's yeah, that's. But I mean, you've done so much already, so it's yeah. very cool. Yeah. Now, could you take us on a little tour of the property and, and what you've done, and Absolutely. just you know share a little bit about? Uh, I mean, this kitchen looks wonderful, and the cabinets. Look at yeah. you know, these are. It's just they're awesome. This is I where was, we've done the most work for sure. This so. is my my favorite my favorite sorry my favorite part. Watch this. Oh, look at that. So the funny very thing nice. is, Quentin, we weren't quoted soft clothes. It just. Oh. It, we got it. We don't really know why we were so lucky, but we were. Oh, okay. So this is where we did the most work. In this room, um, instead of retiling, we just decided to embrace the retro tile and try to make everything else match to it. Now, um, countertop custom cabinets, we did all that custom just because we have this box that's over the stairs, so we had to go custom with that. We installed the range hood, the stove was always here, fridge was here, but we redid the tile here. Um, it's a sticky tile, but it's a grotable tile, so it looks more like ceramic, so it cool. looks a little bit better for people. Um, that's mainly what we did, and we did actually add an extra outlet up here because uh, we found living here that people with one outlet in the kitchen, um, we kept having issues. So There's one other thing here with the, with the countertop. This was a big box that sort of went all the way back. And it was pretty unusable, so what we decided to do was to add a little bit of a lip. Right. So if they have some high stools, they can have a little bit of a breakfast bar. Yeah, it becomes an eating kitchen, yeah. you know? That's very yeah. cool. Yeah. Right. I mean, it, it is a fair sized kitchen anyway, so... It's not bad, and the cabinet space is amazing, and we can attest to that ourselves, because we used it a lot ourselves. Yeah, that is cool. <laughs> right, can, we, can we take a look around the rest of the property? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, cool. A couple of things that uh, we lucked out with, we really didn't... Uh, Hope on was the fact that uh, a lot of the windows were newer, yep. so we really didn't have to pay for that as well. There's a newer roof as well, okay. um, so long term we really don't have to worry about those types of problems like having to replace windows or make your roofs and those types of things. The hole was a real issue for us to be completely honest. It's all plaster. Yep. These walls, it's not oh. drywall. Right, okay. So we'll, we'll come up here if you can take a look up here later, but you'll see if you look in the laundry room, there's a tile that goes about this far off the wall. Right. And it's okay. a very checkered, tacky, retro tile that we couldn't keep. It's actually the color of your shirt. It, it is. This yeah. color is white and black. <laughs> cool. um, so what they had to do was, if it was drywall, they would have ripped it out and just re drywalled but they couldn't do that. So they had to scrape and scrape and scrape and get everything off and refinish the walls, which was a, it was a really big job um, here in the hall. And then we retiled to match the kitchen as well, through, all through here. Right. Yeah, and this is a bungalow. And so the great thing about bungalows and why we love buying them is the fact that there's a separate entrance on the side. Right. Um, so this allows us a place to, to install the stack of the laundry. Because we like each unit to have its own separate laundry, yeah. um, it helps us attract the type of tenant profile that we're looking for. You think you get a little bit of boost in rent from that too? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah. Very good. It's twofold, yeah. Um, the bedrooms we didn't do much except paint. Yeah, the um, floors look great though. Like these floors in the, the dining room here and the living room adjacent had the most ugly shag, carpet. shag carpeting. Oh, well, they don't look shag now. And no. this was what was underneath them. So we were yeah. pretty fortunate uh, that we were hoping the hall was the same. It wasn't, so we tiled it. But the carpet got torn up and we didn't have to do much more than that. 
No more green shag. Nope. Yeah. All right. And the only other barrier we hit was there was mold issues in the house. So we had to take care of that as well, which we remediated first. That was a big thing we did first. Yeah. I mean, yeah, but that's the thing, right? They're, they're only problems and um, every house has, has something. Yeah. You just have to go in and address it, right? So yeah. That's what you did. You just went in there, understood that it was what needed it to be done, and you went out and did it. So. And the great thing about this house, too, is um, the original owners are the ones who sold it to us. And uh, so they they were here when the houses were, were built on the street and whatnot. And, you know, by the decor, we understood, we understood or we assumed that nothing was done to it. Yeah. So from our perspective, we'd rather, you know, buy that type of house rather than a fixer-upper where who knows whether the guy was licensed yeah. or really knew what he was doing. And then you have some surprises behind the walls. So. And to be honest, the house showed quite poorly to start off with because it was older. It was maybe in a bit of disrepair, that kind of thing. And for me, it's a funny story how we got it because our initial offer, we actually made two offers. So they were holding offers on a certain date. We knew we wanted the house. So we made an offer before that date okay. and they wouldn't look at it. So we waited for the date and we made another offer. We weren't even in the country when we made the second offer. And the second offer was lower. Just over ten thousand dollars lower. Interesting. And right. we got the house. Wow. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Got a good deal on the on the buy. That's what it is, right? You yeah. Get a good it's deal all on the buy. buy. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Very good. Yeah. All right. We'll take a, a peek at the rest of this. Yeah. These are the two bedrooms. Yeah. yeah. Master bedrooms. Fairly big. It's a nice big window overlooking the uh, backyard. Yeah. The backyard was another story. Um, the lady who who lived here, she loved to garden. So the whole backyard, you know, my typical backyard has grass, except this one is a whole garden and had been kept for years. So there were basically yeah. weeds that were probably as tall as I was. Yeah. Um, so we took the weed whacker to it. Um, we just... Tilled it all under, um, yeah. didn't have to fertilize because it was almost like topsoil back there. Grass grew, no problem. Oh, great. Um, that was good. A lot of weeds we'll have to fix in the spring. But overall, the backyard is really nice and large, um, fenced in. Yeah. We need to deal with a large, larger-ish shed back there. Yes, pretty good. Pretty so good. this would be the master probably. Yeah. Just a coat of paint yeah. and just painting the closets, freshening everything up because it had the dark trim before the white just makes it look a little bit bigger, a little bit more modern. We kept the little intricacies like the silly little um, plates on the outlets or uh, 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 yeah, the, the, the older uh, oh, yeah. And, yeah. yeah, it's got a nice yeah. polish to it. And then the, the washroom, we really just put in a new vanity and a new toilet yep. um, and kept the nice retro pink tile in there. <laughs> well, you know, that's the thing, right? It's not going to, how much of a lift are you going to get into your value, right? You know, and, and bathrooms are expensive. So for us to spend $200 on, you know, $100 on the vanity, $100 on the toilet and to be done with it, yeah. it's stuff we can do ourselves for yeah. the most part. Yeah. The yeah. best way, it really wasn't worth getting into these tiles, at least yeah. not this time. It'll wear out eventually with tenant use, so we may have to fix it up, but yeah. for now. Yeah, it's all about uh, renovating up to your tenant profile. I think when you first sort of start out with this business, yeah. it's really easy to get to run away with your costs, you know, because right. you're thinking as far as you living there as opposed to the tenant yeah. profile uh, that you want living there. So. Our countertops are the best example of that, because where we had our countertops done was the same place as the cabinets, and it's all custom, and we got a really good deal. We did price out solid countertops just to see, and the difference was 400 for our laminate, to the 2200 for the grip, wow. the, the solid. Well, I can replace my countertops five times if my tenants destroy them. Right. So why would I do it? Because yeah. your tenants aren't going to destroy them every time you get a tenant in. So right. it just didn't make sense. And it wasn't going to get us substantially more rent, not given the state of the rest of the house or the area. It looks great the way it is. So yeah, good. Yeah, good. plus the location sells itself. Like I said before, yeah. so close. People want to live in this area. Yeah. yeah, great. Can we? Are we allowed to take a look at the basement? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, so we're here in the basement, yeah. and uh, and it looks like you've got a lot going on here, and it's you're. Coming close to the end, I guess. We are, yeah. Yeah. So uh, maybe you can uh, tell us a little bit about the, you know, the paint color and the, some of your flooring choices and, and take us around your, your uh, basement here. Okay. Um, so the paint color, as you'll see, it's the same paint color that we use upstairs. Uh, we try to use the same paint color in every property. 
Yeah. And we do that intentionally. Um, so in the event that you know the paint is damaged or chipped, uh, people move out and move in and we need to touch yeah. it up. Uh, we only have one can of paint to buy, regardless of the property. Okay. So, so it's a strategy. And we reuse our leftovers. I mean, yeah. we're making the most of what we buy there as well. Because you'll see that this is the same. So this is this will be a main living space, like a living room. This is the same as the bedrooms upstairs, for example. And we go next door. Our kitchen is the same as the halls upstairs. And if you go to the bedrooms, it's the same color as the kitchen upstairs. It, it might not be the same rooms, but it's the same three base colors that we're using. Very good. And uh, okay, so can we take a look around at the, um, you know, maybe just walk through the kitchen and the hallway and yeah. okay. what, so this is the main living area yeah. Yeah. and this is huge. So this is like a, this is a big main living area and then you've got like an eating kitchen. A dining room here ideally. Um, and then a nice big kitchen yeah. with a peninsula. With, we will have just a slight overhang again just for that little bit of an eating area for right. them as well. Um, again, little things that get you a better tenant profile is really what we're looking for that don't hopefully cost a lot. So just to add a little bit on the countertop isn't a big cost for something that's nice for people. Um, the windows were still all new, so that looks really nice as well. Um, appliances we keep pretty simple, cabinets and everything very simple, so they won't have the soft clothes and the fancy stuff you saw upstairs. Right. Um, <laughs> these are just the basics, but uh, it's a large kitchen for a nice basement apartment as well. So. And one of the things, because it's a basement, we want to try to make it feel nice and big and airy. So as you see the sight lines, if you're sort of you know above three or four feet here, you can sort of see all across. So it looks like it's mm -hmm. almost one room. Mm -hmm. um, so that, once right. again, that was sort of intentional, so to make it feel like not like it wasn't a basement. Yes. Right. It's nice and open. You got the pot lights that kind of you know makes it look um, modern and, mm -hmm. and clean. Yes. We have one of the bedrooms here. One of the interesting things. Ooh, we got a nice. Uh, yes. Your flooring is already done for you. So this is one of the interesting things about this property. Our understanding is the the gentleman who originally lived here was a builder himself. Um, so this is the I guess they call it the terrazzo floors. You can see it in schools like high schools, elementary right. schools, that kind of thing. This stuff will never be damaged or destroyed. No. You, you cannot kill this stuff. So we knew we could never take it up. That wasn't an option. Right. So we've embraced it. We're yeah. going to buff it and clean it and just embrace it as it is because it, it's, it's a good floor. Our tenants yeah. will never be able to create water damage to this floor. They'll never be able to destroy it in any way. Uh, so in a way, it's a blessing. And plus, to have added something on top of it, we decrease our height then all of a sudden if we want to put um, any kind of laminate hardwood, anything like that. Yeah, it takes away from the big, airy basement feel that we're yeah, looking for. Right. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. And can we take a look at the, This is um, a shared ensuite. Basically, yeah. Yeah, so what happened was... It's looking back, or, well, I gotta say, I love this, uh, the tile. And, yeah, it's, it's, it's fancier clean. than maybe we would go sometimes, but we got a deal on the tiles, so yep. we went with it. Um, the walls were finished in a very rough sort of manner. We couldn't really get them sanded down the way we wanted. So what we did was we tiled the walls. And embrace that. There's a lot of open plumbing there. We boxed that in there as well. And you'll see, you know, same toilet, same vanity is upstairs. Go with what works. We know how to troubleshoot these things. It's the same faucet. Everything is the same. Very good. Yeah. Take a picture of the, um, of the faucet. That's right. <laughs> now everybody knows their faucet. Okay. Uh, so we've got some another bedroom here. Yeah. Nice big closet again. Yeah. 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 Essentially like a walk-in closet, basically. Yeah. Nice large space here as well. Uh, High ceilings. We did the LED lights, just they last really long, so that's a little bit easier for us here. Uh, and a lot less expensive than doing the pot lights um, to do these LED. It's lights. nice and bright. Yeah. It is. It's a very bright basement. And so we've embraced the old with the new with this property, and uh, the flooring sort of mirrors that as well. So as you'll see, we had the old terrazzo flooring, and the flooring that we're going to be using here actually came from a commercial operation. There was somebody who was looking to move out and uh, basically redesign a new storefront and they had all this existing flooring. I guess they were putting in marble or something, you know, higher end. And uh, fortunately for us, uh, a good friend of ours gave us a call and said, you know, we have a thousand square feet of, uh, of engineered hardwood. Do you guys want it? You know, to them it was trash. To us it was gold. Yeah. Yes. Um, so we'll be using that. Uh, so we literally, yeah. you literally said, okay, that's it, I'm taking off. <laughs> and went up and filled our SUV to the brim. Every inch of it yeah. was filled with hardwood flooring. One of our, one of our caveat, or one of the things that, that's important to us is, you know, to spend time 
on the business as opposed to in the business, but sometimes you have to get your hands dirty. Absolutely. And this is one of those opportunities where you know we got a phone call, there was an opportunity. Yeah. We had the SUV, so we had the capability to transport it back and yeah. forth. So yeah. you know, put in a couple hours work, and you know, you save yourself thousands of dollars. Yeah, a couple thousand for sure. Yeah. You know, hardwood. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, nice. Exactly. Very good. We we want to keep a certain ceiling height that we yeah. need to keep, and there's duct work we couldn't move. Right. So that would mean getting like an architectural beam or something like that to raise it up and special duct work. Well, we couldn't get enough special duct work. Not everything could be flattened like it would. So you can see here we managed to bring some duct work to get our height here. Right. We couldn't do it everywhere. And there was also a post here. So these were all issues we were dealing with. It's pretty expensive to get a beam to cover this whole space. Right. That's why we built a half wall. It's a lot cheaper to build a half wall so that no one can use this as egress so that we don't have to keep the ceiling height the same. This can no longer be egress anymore. They have to go around this way, where we have the legal height that we need, versus here where we just couldn't find a way to get the height that we wanted. Wow. Yeah, I think we were quoted so, somewhere around $15,000 just to get the beam put up and installed. Between everything, yeah. Everything so that just needed. would have cut all our profit out of the, profit, out of yeah. the projects. So. Right, so smart renovation, yeah. adding a half wall, just lowering the duct ducting in this area in particular yeah. enabled you to get the um, you know the height that you need in order to make this a, a great cash flowing property. Yeah. So uh, can I give you both a high five at the same time? All right. <laughs> All right. This is awesome. This is great. What a great property. Congratulations. Yeah. This is yeah, you know you. a good buy. Lots of cash flow. You're gonna pull your your renovation money out. Good stuff. Yeah. Keep going. Yeah. Yes. That's for me. All right. Good stuff.